Right, now this rather precarious tower behind me consists of three different spectrum analyzer type devices. I'm not talking about scientific measurement equipment here, just things that flash along with your music to provide you with a bit of visual entertainment. So there's that one, that one in the middle, and this rather large one on the top. The question is, are any of these worth your money? I mean, none of them are gonna be a great investment opportunity, but if you wanted to buy one of these type of things, are any of these any good? bit late for me, already bought all three, but hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. So let's get on, and I'll tell you if any of these are any good. Okay, so this parcel contains two different devices. They've been wrapped together because they've been shipped from the same company, but you can see it's two because we've got an AC adapter on here and another one on that side as well. So uh, let's get them both out of here and uh, we'll set them up one at a time. Well, it's certainly got plenty of plastic protection on it. I seem to remember ordering these from AliExpress, so I should look back in my account history to see exactly how much this one cost. Uh, notice we've got these bits here for attaching it up to a rack power switch here. Ah, good. Line or mic? Well, I always like these things once they've got a microphone in them. I assume the the mic is, well, I was going to say it might be that hole there, but that might have an LED on it. We'll find out in a moment. But uh, yeah, I just want to also just clean the front of this up. I don't know if you can see that. It's got some residue on from all that plastic that was put on there. So as far as your inputs and outputs go on the back here, we've got a standard stereo RCA line level pair and XLRs, and that's mirrored on the output side as well. Of course, you've got to decide which of those inputs you're going to use. This thing does not have a switch on it to choose between them. It's not a switch box, so it's down to you to pick between these two, or at least only send audio to one of them at a time. Now, since you've got the inputs and outputs, you can daisy chain this between other components. The only thing to bear in mind about that is that it might add some noise on your audio path. I tend to prefer to use the microphone on these things and uh, not introduce it into the audio chain. Uh, you've got the DC input on the back there. Now this case is all plastic as is the front. Well the front's probably perspex and covered with something at these ends but yeah there's, uh, there's not much in the way of metal in this component but uh, it feels relatively solid so I'm not going to hold that against it. Okay, now the audio is coming from this Walkman plugged into speakers. I haven't plugged any cables into the back of this yet. I'm just going to use the microphone on the front here. At least I think it's on the front. So we'll start it playing. And we'll turn it on. And we've got a clock. Brilliant. Now I'm trying to get this looking as good as I can on the camera so I've wedged it up with a couple of bits of white tack here just to get the angle better so that you're looking at it dead on and it doesn't have all the reflections off the counter. It's really quite bright and vibrant but when I look at the camera screen it doesn't look quite the same for some reason. Now the buttons on the right here mirror those of the ones on the remote so I might as well just use the buttons here. And we've got peak and pattern. Well, of course, the peak will change the colour of the peak. So at the moment, you can see that's red. So let's just press it. And it should change colour to something else. Yes, yeah, yellow now. Oh, it's also floating upwards. So it affects the way the peak reacts as well. The thing that you might have noticed there, though, is there's quite a delay every time you press these buttons. Everything goes blank. So we'll just press it again. And it kind of resets. Right, we've got pink or purple peaks going off there now. But yeah, it's quite hard to work your way through these settings to see the best one. Um, let's just keep going. I'm going to go on to pattern now. So this is going to change the base part of it. I don't like those peaks going off the top though. Let's press that peak button again. The trouble with a lot of these things is they give you a heck of a load of options and it takes you forever to work your way through them all. So I'm just trying to get a normal peak that doesn't float upwards and I'm going to have to press that top button like a million times. Yeah, uh, it's perhaps not the best interface. I'll change the pattern one at the bottom as well. We'll just change that to a different colour. So there we go. We've got a kind of purpley pink. Of course, it's not showing up particularly well now. But um, let's just press auto. That should cycle its way through the various different settings. Anyway, the image quality here, the, the um, display is really quite high res. And the reason I know that is because this animation button at the bottom, when you press that, you get some pretty good demonstrations of what it can do. So this is using each individual pixel in a way, and we're doing it as a proper RGB display. The thing that you'll notice off it though, is that it's just looping around. It's not having any 
uh, impact on the audio or the audio isn't having any impact on the display I should say these are just animations like it says so they look quite impressive really uh, but there's perhaps not much point behind them they are short little video clips so some of these might look like they could react to music but they are just video clips in fact if we work our way through them there are 10 in total you'll see eventually i get to one that is uh, a bee visiting some flowers and that's clearly just a little short video clip i think it might be the next one coming around after that there we go so yeah we've got 10 animations to work our way through but yeah the, it's, the interface on this is not good i'm not sure if it will remain on the thing i last last left it on so let's find out we're going to switch it off so it should come back to that b when we turn it on let's see what happens and it shows the time there's another thing i've got no way of setting that time right it goes back to the first animation so that gives you an idea on that one so if we go into the peak and pattern setting right so we'll go to one a few in from there uh let's go to this one we've got red peaks and we'll change the pattern to yellow right red and yellow ish turn that off turn it back on again and see what we get after the clock has disappeared it should display oh we've got orange and green yeah so the interface on this is a bit of a shambles the display itself is pretty good at the moment it's just reacting to my voice let's just put some audio into this through those rca jacks on the back now there's no sensitivity control on here by that i mean if you put a source into this that's peaking the whole thing out you can't bring it down by adjusting something on here you'd have to adjust the output of the source however i've noticed that it does seem to have an automatic gain control type system because if i start a track it might peak it out at the top but then it brings it down to a level where it's able to display the whole thing properly and i'll just show you that with this next track Now at the far right of the display you can see this section displays the overall volume and it's really quite low down now it started off all the way at the top and yet the overall volume of the song hasn't changed and i haven't adjusted the level of the input at all it's just brought itself all the way down to here Now I'd press the auto button at the beginning there because I thought it was going to cycle through various different colours and patterns. As it was, it just stuck to the one all the way through the song. It only changed colours right at the end, so it looks like it only does it every few minutes. And in fact, it's stuck on this one. Ah, there we go. It's finally changed. So I'll play this song through a few times now. So yeah, every perhaps three or four minutes, the auto will change the colour. But uh, yeah, it's not as frequent as it is on some other devices. Yes, I found the page for this one. Apparently it costs £144 uh, and then the shipping was £17 or so on top of that. Uh, definitely not worth that. Yeah, um, it says here how I set the time as well. You notice the time's appearing on there when it's not in use and you've got to press auto for five seconds. Let's just try this one. I couldn't figure this out before. I was pressing all sorts of buttons and nothing was happening. Okay, so I've got the time set now. This will display whenever audio isn't coming into it. Now, of course, if you leave it in the line mode, it won't hear anything unless you turn some equipment on that's plugged in the back. In mic mode, if you make enough noise in the room, the clock display will go off and it will start showing the spectrum analyzer for the audio it's hearing. It takes a couple of seconds for that though, but we'll just set it there. But you'll see any second now it will trip over there we go we're in the spectrum analyzer mode now now i'm going to change the colors here because the peak is the same color as the pattern which isn't the best use of the display uh, but actually we'll move it into the animation and just talk about the resolution here so according to the specs here it is 128 by 32 the resolution and as far as the peaks and pattern displays go well there are 64 main values which is i think they're referring to the bottom bit the pattern the main column so there's 64 different color options for that 
and then there are 14 peak patterns and that means there are seven colors but some of them can display like this one here falling and then you go through them again and there's another seven where they go off the top. So as you can see, that's a lot of options and you've got to cycle through them all one after the other by pressing these buttons and it's very slow to change from one to the next. So you can't just jump to them quickly. If you press it loads of times, it'll only move on to the next one. It won't move on like 10 or anything. So yeah, uh, the options available here for changing the colors uh, awkward and slow and as before if you turn it on and off it just resets to whatever it wants anyway so definitely not the best this one unfortunately and uh, certainly not really worth what I paid for it either. We'll just leave this one to one side and, and move on to the other one. Uh, yeah this is like fingerprint central this thing so at this end we've got a uh, an on-off switch and the power jack there, uh, nothing at that end. There's a, a what looks like probably a mic hole and then that'll be a line in. Okay by looking back through the previous purchases I found the advert for this one. Unfortunately there's no links on there to any form of instructions as far as the construction goes and the photos that they provided are all really quite low resolution so I'm not quite sure where all these little bits of plastic are supposed to go. You can't make that out from the images, although I do get an idea about the general construction as to how it goes together, so hopefully it will become apparent as I go along. As far as the cost of this goes, well there's two different versions. There's a 20 level and a 30 level. I think I've got the 20 level here, that's the number of columns across, and that's £130. The 30 level one that's of course wider is £146. And then we've got shipping of around about £37 on top of that. So yeah, Again, not cheap. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought these things, but now that they're here, let's see if I can figure out how this one goes together. Well, obviously these LED strips go in all these different holes all the way across. The acrylic panels somehow go on top, and I presume these are spacers that go in between the different levels. Uh, we'll have to count them out and see if that works. Although, what do these things do? Hmm, not sure. Right, so I've just counted. There are 20 sockets across there. There are 20 of these, there's 10 with two in each packet, and then there's this one that's longer than the others. And there's just the two of those, so I'm not quite sure where that comes into play. I mean, should it even be in this packet? I think the first thing I should do is to unwrap all these and see exactly what it is that I've got. So they've wrapped all these up in this cling film and it's taken me an absolute age to get it off. This one just took me about five minutes. I'm gonna to have to get quicker at it, but uh, yeah, so those are the, the two that are longer than the others. Let's, let's try and get one of these out and we'll see what the difference is. Okay, so that's the shorter one in my left hand. And uh, they're definitely less dense with the number of LEDs in the space. Let's have a look in here and see what this stuff's all about. Yeah, so these are adhesive and it looks like you could perhaps punch a hole out in the middle of them. I'm not too sure. And then there's these hard plastic ones of which there are a considerable number. I feel like I've just volunteered for a job in a Chinese factory here and it wasn't really what I wanted to do today. Okay, now I've got all those in there. I'm just gonna plug it in and see what happens. Well, that's all the LEDs. I can see already I've got a couple of faulty ones here. We've got a couple of yellow ones oh, showing up right. Let's put one of these larger ones in and see what this does. You're probably not supposed to plug them in as you go in like this, but we'll find out. Yeah, um, not sure what the point of that is. Let's go back to this, this one here. Okay, so yeah, a couple of yellow ones there definitely that shouldn't be yellow as far as I'm concerned anyway. So maybe that would be something to be best if I put towards the end here. Let's just, uh, yeah, you see the colour issue there. Okay, oh dear. This, this is not going to be good, is it? Okay, now I'm still a little bit puzzled as to how to put this thing together. I've looked at some pictures of other ones that are on other adverts, and it seems like you assemble the acrylic section first, get that all done in one piece, and it's held together by these bars. And then once you've got that piece assembled, you then screw it to the base at the back. There are 
three points along there. The most difficult thing for me though is the fact that these acrylic panels have to line up with the LEDs, one for each LED layer. And then of course they have to be spaced apart so that they line up with the next row along. And that's going to use these little spacers. But since we've got two different kinds of spacers here, I've got to assume that you use these in combination with one another. You use perhaps a plastic one and then one of these rubber adhesive ones. I'm going to have to measure the gap between the rows of LEDs and then figure out exactly what I have to put in between these as far as uh, the plastic washers go to keep them that distance apart. So yeah, it's a little bit of a puzzler this one. I wasn't expecting it to be this difficult. But uh, yeah, once I've got it all assembled, then I suppose I'd screw it to the base and then slide these down through the top. So I've put these on here to test them out. And the one that was a little bit faulty with some colours, I've put down the end here next to the end. Because this one seems to be the overall volume again on the right. And this one, with it being at the end of the spectrum, it's not really picking much up at all anyway. So I thought, well, I might as well stick it in that one there. But yeah, um, it's, it's not the best thing already, this. I, I mean, it's a lot of work, and I'm sure it's not going to be worth it at the end, either price-wise or effort-wise. But I'm determined to carry on now. But yeah, as far as the rest of it goes, you can see the metal sections there. So these bars screw into there. But of course, you'll notice the LEDs start quite a way up from the bottom. So the bar, you've got a couple of bolts on it, as well as the part on the top, which will eventually go on at the end. So you'd have to get the bolts lined up as well, so that the bottom bolt goes in through here, if I could just use this one as an example. So that will go through the acrylic piece, and then you've got to make sure that you're holding it at the right height to be level with that first LED and then build up from there. So I think that's why you build this thing separately, but I can imagine the whole thing just getting a tiny bit out as an angle. And then by the time you get to the top, it's going to be way off. It really is quite a difficult thing to put together and a lot more of a challenge than I was expecting. Okay, it's day two. I spent the evening last night taking the plastic off these things. That was a fun hour or so. Uh, so I've got everything now ready to assemble. I'm just not entirely sure how to do it. I'll put one of these on each of the rods. These are the hard plastic ones. So if we get one of those fed on each and then follow that up like a sandwich with another one of these acrylic panels and I'll see how far apart these are in relation to the LEDs on one of the strips. Well, that's kind of perfect. So I'm just wondering what the point is of having the other ones. Maybe those are for the other strips. Remember we had these that uh, I didn't know what to do with these longer ones. Maybe those are the same width apart as one of these things. Yeah, it's quite possible, isn't it? That? So maybe I don't need these at all. Maybe it's just the hard plastic ones that keep this thing separated. Okay, so we'll keep those out of the way. I still don't know why they included those. And I'm going to start building this up now as a sandwich. I'm going to go all the way to the top with an acrylic panel, a plastic washer, and then another acrylic panel and uh, work my way through like that. Nearly there now, not too much further to go. And uh, <laughs> the big hope now with this is that it all just lines up because if I've gone to all this trouble of putting this together, and then find that the LEDs, once you get to the top, are a little bit far apart from the um, acrylic panels. And uh, you'd have to start all over again, I suppose, and maybe use the, the thinner spaces. But hopefully it's not going to come to that. So this is the last row. Now, there was one plastic bead fell on the floor. I don't need that now. I thought they would have given me some spares, but let me go and find it. There it is. Good. Well, it shows that I'm using the right things because there are no spares left over. So it looks like that is how it's all supposed to go together. Right, so now I just need to screw the tops on these to stop the whole thing falling apart. And then we can see if it all fits together. 
it does come with a little spanner to tighten these up with but um, I'm not going to do anything more than finger tight at the moment because I'm not confident this is going to work properly but uh, we'll see in a second. I think the best way is to load this up with ease and then try and get it plugged in at the end that might be the way so if we just slide each one of those into there up to the chip at the bottom and then get this whole thing pre-loaded with these LED strips which is easier said than done then I just have to get all these plugs in at the end rather than trying to feed this thing over the top of them I suppose that's how you're supposed to do it okay now let's just have a look how the LEDs line up with those oh no they're not lining up at all oh flipping heck I don't know if you can see this let's just look at this one here so if I get the bottom one lined up next one's lined up and then they start to go out a little bit so it's just a bit too tall and by this point the LEDs are between the panels and then by the time we get up back up to the top again it's lining up again um you know I'm just gonna leave it as it is it won't look right but I, I've well let's just see if we can plug it together <laughs> Yeah, I think I can see what's going on there because when I look at the front of here I can see that the bulbs start off okay but after a while they start appearing above the piece of acrylic which of course means that the acrylic isn't spaced far enough apart so the only way I'm going to be able to space it further apart is by using one of the pieces of plastic I've already put in there and then add one of those on top of each one just to bring it up so it looks like I'm going to have to take all this apart and start again but if that's what it needs, that's what it needs. So let's get on with that. At least I got all these things plugged in. That bit wasn't as difficult as I thought. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be uh, quite time consuming. Okay, now I thought these were self-adhesive, but once you peel them off there, they don't seem to have any sticky properties. They do have a centre hole that needs to be punched out though, and uh, that's easier said than done. Uh, it's going to take quite a while to do all these, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed one of those on, and then one of the plastic ones on the top, repeat for all three, and work my way all the way up to the top. doesn't flipping line up again oh this is terrible oh i've got i've got two at the top here they don't even have leds on them this time round. it was better first time round. i mean it didn't line up but this one really doesn't line up They're putting a rubber thing and a plastic thing between each row has spaced them out too much now i mean i thought maybe i'm supposed to be alternating them but why why would they give me so many of the little plastic ones enough to have one each row if they didn't intend you to do that I'm going to try alternating. I'm going to go big piece of plastic, little piece of rubber, big piece of plastic, all the way up. See if that lines up. No, that doesn't line up at all either. I think I'm going to change it back to the one with the hard pieces of plastic in between each layer. It didn't work out as far as lining up, but it seemed closer than anything else I've done. So we'll just go back to that. Okay, so there we go. Well, it's giving a reasonable effect on the camera but when you start to look at it a little bit closer you realize that the acrylic sections here start off just fine and then go out of whack by the top and the LEDs are just shining through from behind. I can see it cycling through various different colors at the moment. We've got the peaks in red going off the top and it'll be much the same software as the other one because we've got the same remote control here we've got four buttons that will no doubt correspond with these so let's go for the animation one and see what appears there um what's that i can't quite make that out can you it's video again isn't it you need to be a long way away from this to be able to see that properly let me go to the other end of the room and see if i can figure out what's going on 
Right, so I've turned the lights down a bit and I'm cycling through the various animations. Some of these are far more impressive than others. That's a little bit too manic. I'll move on to the next one. Uh, same with that. There are some that really do look quite nice, like this, for example, with the nice bright colours. Uh, pretty pointless though. You can see how it loops pretty quickly there where it jumps at that point after it's gone around three times. Uh, it should just jump around about now. There we go. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty obvious jump. But uh, one thing I've also noticed towards the centre of this, the ones where they're out of line, if we just move up to there, it really does spoil the effect a little bit. You can see how they look a little bit dark, a little bit kind of unusual bit different from the ones above and below. I'm looking towards the centre of the image here and that's just where the acrylic starts going out of line with the LEDs. But uh, yeah, certainly colourful anyway and um, let's try and play some music through it. Okay, now the controls are a little bit odd. In fact, I'm not really understanding how they work at all. The top two buttons on the remote don't seem to do anything. The animation button at the bottom will take me into the animations and then I've got an auto button which if I'm using that in the animation mode will cycle through the various different animations. Uh, but I can't get into the spectrum analyzer off the remote. I've got to go on the device itself and I've got these buttons labeled one, two, three and four and four seems to be the same as the animation button. Three, I've got to guess, is the auto button. So they're probably lined up the same as the ones on the remote. Maybe just the top two on here are faulty. So one is bringing me into this spectrum analyzer mode. And uh, if I press one again, something will change. Yeah, the color, yeah, right. So the first one's changing the peak. The second one, therefore, must be changing the base, yeah. And then the third one will be some auto mode. As far as the sound goes on this one, it's got a line in, but it doesn't have a line out, so I can't feed the audio through it. So what I'm going to do, I'll play the audio through the Walkman here, through the speakers that are lined up by the side of this, and it'll be listening through the microphone like it currently is to my voice. So let's have a look at that. <laughs> Okay, I've wired the Walkman directly into this now rather than using the built-in microphone. Let's just try it with a sweep on the logarithmic scale. So we'll see how that's represented. I'm just going to turn the lights down a little bit. Okay, so I've muted the audio down there because I'll get complaints if I don't, but you can see it is properly trying to represent the frequencies as they're going from the low notes up to the high ones here. This last column, that's the one that represents the overall volume, and I can see that that is the one with the dicky LEDs on it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's not just a silly device that's flashing random colours in time with the music. It is trying to represent the frequencies, although it errs more on the side of entertainment than a proper spectrum analyzer. Uh, let's just play some more music into this with this direct feed and see how that looks. <laughs> Now I'll turn the lights down in a second, we can have a proper look at that. I just want to mention first though that you'll notice when the music starts playing that the levels are all the way up to the top again, just like on the previous device. And then the auto gain gradually brings it down so that the spikes only start hitting the top rather than the whole thing maxing it out. You'll also notice here I've got a clock showing. I can't read what time that is supposed to say with my eyes. It might look better through the camera, but I'm also having trouble finding any way to set that clock as well. But uh, that's by the by. Let's just turn these lights down and play a bit of audio. Now, before I wrap up my final thoughts about this one, I thought I should get the other one out because I didn't run through a sine wave sweep on this. So I just want to show you that now while I'm talking. So this is running through a logarithmic scale, just the same as the other one, the 
audio frequencies go from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz and it's doing its best to try and represent those as the sweep goes through the frequencies this one being the volume of course on the right just the same as the one at the back here so yeah that is doing the same as this and as you'd expect because they've come from the same manufacturer they do pretty much the same things they seem to be running pretty much the same software as one another with uh, slight tweaks but uh, yeah, as far as this one at the back goes, I really can't recommend it. I think it's it's pretty ugly actually. Once it's all put together, there's lots of sort of exposed bits on it uh, that look a bit too industrial, and there's like a mirror reflection thing, and the chips are at the bottom, and the wires sticking out the side. It's just ugly. It's an ugly thing. It doesn't look nice at all. It's missing the whole point of this uh, kind of spectrum analyzer as entertainment type device. And I never did quite get the parts lining up right despite spending hours and hours and hours on it. No doubt there are some instructions somewhere that tell you the exact ratio of washers to spacers to put between these things to try and get those LEDs lined up, but it really shouldn't be as difficult as it is. It costs a lot of money and it takes a lot of your time up and at the end of it, it just doesn't look all that great. This one, a little bit better, but still not something that I'd recommend. So these two, no. I'd, I'd just say stay away from these but also just this idea when you see something like this there are quite a few of these around just bear in mind the amount of trouble that I've gone through trying to put this one together and uh, add that into the factor of whether or not you think it's worth getting hold of one of these for yourself now since these two are disappointing I do actually have another one that I think might be all right and I'd almost forgotten about it I stuck it away in the attic uh, let me go and get that one out. So yeah, forget about these. Let's hope this next one's better. Okay, now with this one, I'm hoping it will be an alternative that I could recommend to the RTA31 that was previously sold by Tobin. They no longer sell that, unfortunately. A lot of people were asking for something similar in the same price bracket. Now this one, a little bit more expensive, but it's a dual channel version, all in, delivered to the UK. It cost me £148. So let's have a look at it. This is what should be inside the box, although the box has got a bit beaten up in transit, so I'm hoping it's uh, not got damaged. That looks all right, it's uh, well protected with the polystyrene, although something's been gnawing away at the plastic there. Right, so that's the instructions. Oh, yeah, metal bodied, good. That's an improvement. Okay, so around the back we've got an on-off switch. A little bit wobbly, that, but never mind. Uh, power input, 220 to 240 volts, so no doubt you'll get the appropriate one sent to your country. This is the one that was sent, of course, to the UK. Input and output, RCA stereo. Then we've got input one and input two, which are XLRs combined with the quarter-inch jacks. And then output, XLR, and two quarter-inch or 6.35 millimeter jacks there. Right, so around the front, so on the left here, we've got a control, which has helpfully been labelled up as control. It's a knob that you can rotate in either direction freely, and it also clicks. And then over on the other side, this one has been labelled as gain. And again, that operates as the same as the other one. And then we've got four momentary push switches above there. And of course, a long screen here with a big screen protector on it. Notice as I pull this, this old panel's coming off with the LEDs behind. Clearly not manufactured to the highest quality, this thing. I mean, that just needs gluing back on, but still, it's uh, not a good sign. Oh, there's a crack in there as well. Don't, can you see that? There's a, there's a crack in my front piece. <laughs> it goes... It follows a line there, it's like a scrape and then a, a good crack. So, you know, when I said the box looked a bit damaged, looks like they got to the front of this, that's a shame. Okay, well that's not good, is it? And then we've got this uh, smaller one up here, which I believe is uh, going to be a digital display when the thing gets up and running. So let's just peel that one off as well. I'm just trying to plug this in and I've noticed the plug there. Yeah, um, that's not going to work, is it? Let me swap that out. Right, so something's happening. And um, yeah, cool, whatever that is, it's working. We've got rack mountable ears on here as well. Of course, those aren't removable, but the front panel on this one is good solid metal. It's just a shame that the rest of it's a little bit cheap as far as the plastics go here. 
Right, now these instructions, this sheet looks pretty dense with information. There's only a couple of sheets though. This one perhaps is explaining it in a bit more detail. We'll go through that later on. What I want to do first, we'll play some music through it. I'll turn the lights down, but before I do that, I just mention it says 100 there. That's the output volume level. You can see I can adjust that down by turning this dial here. And in fact, I could adjust it up by turning that one there. And all that's happening is, say I was to put in a certain volume into this, that would then be attenuated down to a lower volume if I say set it at 50. If I put it all the way up to the top, the output volume's coming out of it the same as it goes in. Of course, it's not an amplifier, so it's not gonna amplify the audio, it can just reduce it down. But there you go, uh, that's what the 100 means. So ignore that for the moment. Let's just play some audio into it and we'll turn these lights down and have a good look at it. Okay, a couple of things I noticed there. The tint on this panel on the front really is dimming down those LEDs a little bit too much. But also, did you spot that both channels seem to be identical? There didn't seem to be any variance at all between them. Now, of course, that could be down to the type of music, but I do have some stereo tests we can play. So let me put one of those on and we'll see what happens. Okay, so here's my old classic left-right test. Right, 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 right. Now you're listening to this through my lavalier, which is mono, but I don't know if you can see there, they were both showing exactly the same. I've got another one that's a little bit clearer to spot the difference. So we're going to play that one in stereo. I'll just unplug the lavalier and then you can have a listen. Okay, so in this test recording, I've recorded mono audio, but it should be appearing equally through both channels. But now let's move over so that I'm just talking from the right hand channel. So it should just now only be showing up on the right. And now let's move it across. So now I should only be showing up on the left. So if this is showing on the right, there's something wrong. And if this is showing on the left, there's something wrong. Well, there you go. It's not stereo. Both meters, both displays, whatever you want to call them, they're both showing the same thing as each other. So the fact this thing is supposed to be a dual channel device is pointless. One other thing I can do, we can just unplug one of the inputs. Let's unplug the left and see what this does. Okay, so both channels are lighting up and I've only got one plug in at the back here. Let's just swap it for the other one. So we'll put the left hand plug in this time. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, so it's mixing down the stereo into a mono display and then put it on both sides. Now, of course, as a result of that, I'm not going to be able to recommend this one either, but let's just do a sine wave sweep, see what that looks like. Yeah, a bit of a mess that. I mean, it's not too bad in the middle, although it could be a lot tidier. It should just really go up and down as a one peak with the bars either side of it falling away or growing naturally. But look at the distortion at the top there. And then at the bottom where the whole section here all lights up in one go. You're just supposed to be having one bar light up at a time when I'm doing this. And as it is, it's just a really messy display. It's not accurate at all. It's not down to the Walkman because it works fine on that RTA31. But just look at this here when we get to that point there. Wow. Yeah, so it's a it's a hopeless spectrum analyzer as well. Great. So it's it's mono and it's hopeless. Now you might have thought it was one of these things that they'd also labeled up incorrectly as an equalizer when it's really just a spectrum analyzer. But no, you can use this as a graphic equalizer. It's quite tiresome to do though. You have to press in a button and then as you move around, one of these blue lights is flashing. I'm sure you can barely see that, but that is the bar that I can adjust if we just press it. You see channel 14, 15, 16. So it's going all the way up to the top. So the top right one is 31. And that's as far as I can go. And then, of course, if I get it into the middle here, that'll be that one. So once we've picked 
one that we want to adjust. We can then adjust that bar on the equaliser. So you can have that one up a little bit, for example. <laughs> Oops. Uh, and then if I just go down here, we'll put that one down. You get the idea. So this is how you'd go around adjusting your equaliser. And then once you've got these set exactly how you want, you can save them over here and it will save a number of presets but uh, it's not worth having for that also i just want to show you something over here yeah one of these things is not like the other can you spot which one it is yeah they put my bypass button on upside down i mean i'm sure i can spin it around but the bypass button just ignores any settings you've done to the equalizer and it just sends the audio straight through but yeah no no care and attention on this thing whatsoever Okay, so going right back to the beginning of this video, if you can remember back that far, I mentioned that I'll tell you which one of these would be worth spending your money on, and the answer is none of them. Do not spend your money on any of these. They're all flawed in various different ways. I couldn't recommend any of them. In fact, I'm not even going to go as far as putting any links to them in the video description. I wouldn't want anyone to click on them, to buy them, because you're just going to be as disappointed as I am. So all I'd say to you is just keep your money in your pocket and maybe buy something else instead. But if you were thinking of getting some of these, if you see any of these on the uh, auction sites or wherever, on AliExpress or whatever, I'd just steer well clear of them. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. That's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.